welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you're like me and like testing various types of HF antennas, whether they're homemade or commercially built, then you're going to want one of these. Now this is a dedicated whisper transmitter that covers 80 to 10 meters. And the beauty about this product is that once it's set up, it runs completely standalone. Now I'll go through the easy setup shortly later in the video. This product has been designed and produced by Harry from Zactech. Now Harry is a really nice guy, very responsive to emails and totally understands his products and customer requirements. He also has other products for sale on his website, so definitely worth a glance. The power requirements are quite small for this transmitter. It can run continuously from a five volt phone charger or even a USB power pack. It only requires a measly 250 milliamp on transmit and 100 milliamp on idle. The RF output power on each band is 200 milliwatts. That's plenty to see how well your HF antennas are working on the selected band. Of course, if you're using a multi-band antenna, then you will need to make sure that the SWR is good for those bands that you're testing and transmitting on. The WSPR desktop also utilizes a GPS signal. Now this is for position information to calculate the Maidenhead locator automatically. The GPS is also used for accurate transmission timing. Just like FTA and other digital modes, it's important that the transmissions are placed at the correct timings. The information from the GPS takes care of this, so no messing around setting internal clocks. The GPS antenna is included in the kit. So let's take a quick look at what's included in the box. Now you do get a USB cable as shown previously, and you get this quality GPS antenna. Now it is advisable to place the GPS antenna outside as a clear view of the skies will be required for a good quality lock on the GPS satellites. Luckily, the cable is quite lengthy. Now it's terminated with an SMA male plug and this connects directly to the WSPR transmitter itself. Now the transmitter has a nice sturdy metal casing with some nice print on the top showing you a block diagram of how it works. The left side you'll find an SMA socket for connecting your antenna. Next to this a little red LED which illuminates when the whisper desktop is transmitting. At the other end, we have the GPS antenna socket and a USB socket, which is used to power the Whisper desktop transmitter. Now this USB port is also used for programming before use. You also notice a couple of LEDs to the left of the antenna socket. Now these indicate the GPS status and when power is applied to the transmitter. Now here we have the connections in place. The GPS antenna is attached and placed outside and we have the USB cable plugged into my computer. At the other end, we see the antenna connection, which is currently plugged into my multi-band cobweb antenna. So let's take a look at the software to see how easy it is to configure. So with the software loaded, we first need to set the COM port for the Whisper desktop and then click open. You should be able to find the COM port number in device manager if you don't know it. Now click on the Whisper Beacon tab and you should start seeing some GPS information and a screen like this. Now if not, just click Read Settings button at the bottom. You might also need to wait a couple of minutes for the GPS to get a lock. So first we need to set our call sign in this text box here. Then we need to tick which bands we want to transmit on. Remember this is not simultaneously, they're transmitted in order and only tick the ones which your antenna is capable of using. You can then adjust the transmit schedule. I left mine at the default two minutes. Now underneath this, I set the location to auto GPS. Now this means the GPS data will be used to calculate the maidenhead locator. If for any reason you do not want to use the GPS, you can however manually set the maidenhead locator by entering it into the text box here. Now the reported power I set to 23 dBm. Remember this is not a setting for the power output, but it's a value which is encoded in your whisper signal to tell others what power level you're using. The last setting we need to make is on the boot configuration tab. If you're wanting to configure the whisper desktop to start transmitting as soon as it's booted up and powered on and ready after applying power, then you will want to set this to whisper beacon. If it's left at idle, then you will need to plug in a computer and run the software and press start. 
So it's much easier to set it to whisper beacon, then you just need to attach an antenna and a power source and it will start working. Once all these are set, click the save settings button. You're now ready to disconnect from your computer, plug it into a dedicated power supply and just leave it for 24 hours, which is exactly what I did testing my cobweb antenna. Now the bands used were 20, 17, 15, 12 and 10 meters. Now this website, wsprnet.org, records all of your transmissions as they are received by receiving stations around the world. Now I notice here a nice ping into Brazil on what looks like 20 meters according to the color chart. We also have quite a few pings on the east coast of America with one reaching right up into Canada. Now going further north we have a nice ping into Iceland and if we zoom out a little we can see many pings across Western Europe and right over into Russia just north of Moscow. Looking at the bottom right of the map we see three pings into Australia which is quite impressive with such little power. What's also surprising is that the HF bands were completely dead at the time of performing these tests so it will be very interesting to rerun these tests when conditions pick up again. Now the following day I changed antennas and went for the N-fed half wave. Now this antenna also supports 80 and 40 meters. So let's take a look at that map for the last 24 hours. Now what's interesting here is that the map does look quite similar. East coast of America and Brazil, but there's no pings in Australia. What is intriguing is that we managed to ping in Antarctica. Now that's pretty cool. Literally, no, no pun intended there, I promise. Now if we look around the UK and Western Europe, we can see a denser collection of pings. These would most likely be from 40 or 80 meters, where the NFED half-wave antenna isn't really working that well for DX, but it does for kind of Envis or local comms. Still very interesting to see a comparison of both antennas. Now I'll leave a link in the description to Harry's website in case you fancy giving one a try yourself. What's also quite nice is that Harry's just released version 2 of the Whisper desktop. Now version 2 has the same specifications as version 1, except it has a larger memory capacity for any future upgrades or features. If you already own one of these, let me know how you get on with it. I'll be interested to learn if any of you have used this portable before or from a different location from your home. Massive thanks to all my subscribers, my YouTube members, and of course my patrons. And thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.